Inside of You is brought to you by Sonos. Uh, you know I love this company. You know I love this product. I had them all over my house before they were a sponsor. I've been begging Cumulus to, and the ladies at Cumulus, Agnes and Teresa, please get me Sonos. Get Sonos on as a sponsor. And finally, they do. I can't tell you how much I love Sonos. You know how a lot of times you have these clunky receivers and all, you know, speakers and all these things in your house, and you could just minimize everything and make life simple with Sonos, a Sonos speaker that you could play a different song in each room. You could play party mode outside. You can go listen to some of the, of the Sundays downstairs. If you know who the Sundays are, I like the Sundays. Um, it's really a wonderful product. I haven't heard anyone badmouth Sonos. I say to my friends, I say, you know what Sonos is? They're like, oh my God, of course, Sonos. I know Sonos. Sonos? Yeah, Sonos, man. Oh my God, I knew Sonos. Yeah, and Sonos, <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Sonos has a new product called Roam, and uh, this is such a sleek, cool product, and um, it looks amazing in my home, and I really urge you to check it out. Uh, it's in my office. And uh, the sound is unbelievable. That's just the thing. You don't need these big speakers, these big bulky things in your house anymore, these ceiling speakers. You got, you got Sonos, and Rome is just really amazing and uh, durable, and um, I really like it. Sonos Rome is the ultra-portable smart speaker that allows you to bring the Sonos experience everywhere you go. Rome weighs less than a pound, and its premium, durable design makes it perfect for the home and for on the go. Thanks, Ryan. You know, when you're at home, Rome connects to your Wi-Fi network and the rest of your Sonos system, and then automatically pairs with your phone on Bluetooth when you're on the go for a seamless experience. Using automatic TruePlay tuning, Rome smartly adapts to your surroundings and whatever you're listening to and creates sound that's astonishingly detailed and perfectly balanced. Control Rome using the app Apple AirPlay 2 or your voice with an Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. With Sonos, you can start with one speaker, expand your system over time like I have. I think I have nine in my house. All Sonos speakers connect over Wi-Fi so you can group speakers in different rooms and play music throughout your home. You know, I love Sonos again because it's like if you got a girlfriend or whatever, you know, it's like she's like, I want to listen to whatever. And you're like, well, I want to listen to like this. And you can go, well, I'm going to go to my room. Well, your room is my room. Okay, you go to your, our room. I'm going to go downstairs and listen. <laughs> Just imagining you in a wig. Yeah, yeah, well, there you go. You, <laughs> I've been in wigs before. I've been in a lot of movies. Sonos, we love our Sonos. Please go to Sonos.com to learn more. You will not be sorry. Sonos.com. You are listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. How are you, everyone? Happy New Year to you. I hope you're doing well. Ryan, good to see you again. Good to see you again, yeah, actually. We had, we had Jason in here uh, filming in for you. Yeah, he sounded nice. <laughs> he was, he was <laughs> fun. I, I, I'm bummed I didn't get to meet him. Uh, oh, I still haven't met him in person, but he just seems like a chill-ass dude. Yeah, he's so chill. And he was, <sighs> Welling was like, dude, that dude was hilarious. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, he is chill. I wish I was as chill as him. Yeah. Even you aren't as chill as him. I am not as chill as Jeez, Jason. Jeez, it's like it goes Jason. from it goes from very chill to unchill. Jason was, to me. He was dropping like life truth bombs just like out of nowhere. Dude. It's great. Yeah. Way to go, Jay. Way to go. <laughs> um, great guest today, Jensen Ackles. We'll get into that. But uh, hey, if you like the podcast, I know if you're here for Jensen, you love Jensen, you love Supernatural, you love the boys, you're here for Jensen, you're not here for me. And I, I could I could deal with that. But all I'm asking is if you enjoy the interview, why not listen to another one? Why not subscribe, write a review, and be like, hey, I like this dude, or I think it was a good interview. Unless you think it sucks, and then fuck it. Fuck it, fuck it. Oh, fuck it, man. You know? Oh, fuck it. Um, you, Ryan, by the way, you just got back from Hawaii. I was in Hawaii for two weeks. I don't want to say you look disheveled because you look good, but you, your uh, disposition when you when I walked in, it just felt like you were like... I and mean, it's, it's a long time to be anywhere really with your girlfriend girlfriend girlfriend's family uh yeah. so not my family so it's a lot of uh being uh you know just with anyone who you, 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 you got to turn something on you turn it on it's it, not totally natural right it's like it's not like you're trying to like them you like them but it's yeah. like you're putting on something extra as you're not feeling as laid it back is extra, yeah and it wears you down it does yeah I mean, after the, a while the first week was great you know we hung out with the nieces we did a lot of fun stuff and like adventures and things and like we went on a little hike to a waterfall nice uh, a lot of pickleball i'm good at pickleball oh good let's play some pickleball let's do it i like, would play pickleball show me yeah, how to play pickleball we're good at it now yeah it's it's like uh you can play at any tennis court? 
Uh, they have to have like little lines for it. Some of them, oh, pro- yeah, some yeah. of them probably do. I bet. I bet you they do. Um, but yeah, after it's hard to do for more than a week. I will say, dude. Uh, my dad. While you were gone, my dad was in town for three days. Yeah, and he came in on a Friday and left on a uh, came on Saturday morning and left on a Tuesday morning. So he was barely here three days. And, and you're toast. Yeah. <laughs> Took him to the Lakers game. Took it just, you know, his 70th birthday. And I kind of just like really, you know, lived it up. Uh, l- wanted him to live it up. And yeah. I think he really enjoyed himself. And that was the good thing. But, uh, you know, there was moments where I just was like, you know, there's those <laughs> moments where you just want to say something. But you know it's going to start an argument. So you don't do it. You just don't do it. Well, good on you. But look, he had a great time. That's all I care about. And, uh, you know, it was nice. It was not, it, you know, we had some nice times. And uh, so it, there was that. But, you know, you, you know, I, I'm thinking three days and you t- you're talking two weeks. I would yeah. fucking, no no offense, dad, I'd fucking <laughs> jump off a roof. Mom, if you're listening, I know you both of you aren't. You don't even probably know I have a podcast. But I would jump off the fucking roof. <laughs> and that's no, that's no lie. Hey, guys, if you like the show, follow us. Uh, the handles are at Inside of You Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Please follow us and at Inside of You Pod on the Twitter. Um, write a review on whether you're listening on Spotify, whether you're watching on YouTube, what, whatever you're doing. Write a review; it really helps the show, especially on Apple. Um, write a review, tell us what you think. Um, we're going to get into Jensen, I promise. Just here in a second, but you know, there's things to talk about. I want to say Happy New Year to you. I also want to say that uh, uh, my band Sunspin, Rob and I are playing a show we haven't played in two months. So if you haven't watched the show or you know come to a virtual show, I urge you to check us out. It's you just go to stageit.com. St. In fact, go to sunspin.com. That's the name of the band, and you can get tickets on sunspin.com on upcoming shows. We're playing January 29th, 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Covers, originals. Uh, there's zooms, prizes, all that shit. I hope you you join us. Also, join the lovely patron. Uh, patrons, um, if you go to patreon.com slash inside of you, these people, these patrons of mine follow the podcast, support the podcast and want it to keep going. So if you like the podcast and you want to give something, why not be a patron? So there's that. Uh, what else? I'll be in La Mole, uh, at the La Mole, La Mole. I don't know what you're saying. Convention in Mexico. Nice. In March. Cool. La Mole? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It'll be fun. Nice. I, I went there before. It's great. Great people. Great time. We're going to do a Smallville Nights event with me and Tom. Two-man show. We're going to sign autographs. We love Mexico. Is that where mole sauce originated? I don't know. That stuff's good. Is it? Oh, yeah. It's oh. like the thick, I'll like try the dark some thick mole. sauce. I'll try some mole sauce. Oh, you can get it anywhere around here. Holy mole. Yeah. <laughs> um... If you want any merch, uh, go to the Inside of You online store. We've got I've got like Lexmas uh, scripts from Smallville uh, that you can have signed and pictures and Inside of You tumblers and just a bunch of fun stuff, hats, shirts. So check out the Inside of You online store. And you can also get merch for the band at sunspin.com. And that's pretty much it. We're working on a new album. So we're performing on these virtual shows for Stage It. Anyway, let's get into it. Um, this is great. Great interview. Um, he's always a treat to talk to. Um, he's he's on the boys. He's your supernatural guy. He's <laughs> he's. I just love talking to him. He was in person, and that was fun. It was nice to have him here in person. And uh, I really think you're going to enjoy this interview. And uh, let's get inside of Jensen Ackles. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Yeah, you know, I love Howard Stern, but like one time he started going on a rant about all these actors and all these people have podcasts. It's like, who the hell are listening to them? I'm like, dude, you're a billionaire. You have like a hit show, the biggest show in the history of talk radio. What do you care about like other people doing what they love to do and what they like? It's his space, man. He's king of media. Uh, he's the king of media. Yeah. I love Howard, but Jesus, man, <laughs> like give me a break. It's like I'm doing, I think I'm doing a decent job here and, uh, you know. You know, Howard's one of my heroes. This is uh, this is such a unique space. I just had a meeting yesterday with Wondery. Wondery, yeah, they're uh, they've been a sponsor. Wondery, yep, they um, have. They're uh, they're heavy in the podcast game. Yes, 
And, Why are you uh, thinking about doing a podcast? I, no, I was just trying to get a better idea of what the hell's going on in that space. Could you imagine, like, you know, Tom and I have thought about this willing from Smallville, in case you wonder who, who? I'm talking about. I mean, you know, but like, <laughs> Listen, you know, if you might... refer to somebody by their first name, I assume I know who they are. Well, so. I don't want people to think that I'm assuming they know who I'm talking about or whatever. Like, right. Tom, you know, and you're like, <laughs> like, oh, this is an inside conversation between two I didn't think you were actors. talking about Tom Berenger. Right. I, I assumed you were talking about cool. Welling. Yeah, but he was... He was going, you know, what if we did something where we like science mystery 3000? Is that what it was called? Mystery Science Theater. Mystery 3, Science Theater or well, whatever. Now they're, now they're doing these things. Where we um, watch episodes of Smallville and talk to people and commentate and stuff. It's like, you know, and then I was thinking, wow, if you and Jared got together and did like episodes and had a podcast that you did here and there and you had like, a, you know, you talked about each episode. So funny enough, uh, during the uh, during the, the lockdown last year, 2020. Remember when uh, Krasinski did that some good news thing he came out with? It was like a YouTube thing, and it was just from home, and his kids were decorating the background and stuff. I saw a few episodes of that that gave me an idea, very similar to what you were just talking about. Right. Uh, of course, I'm just there with 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 Daniil and the kids, and we're just trying to not lose our minds. Um, right. You don't need any more projects right now. Right. But but I also am like I can't stay idle. Like I just I'm like we're in lockdown. I don't know what's happening. I'm like right. we got to do something creative. So we literally came up with a concept similar to that where where she and I would watch fan favorite episodes and then talk about them but the but the catch was is I obviously lived it right she hadn't she's she could probably count on one hand how many full episodes of supernatural she's mm. <laughs> good wife good wife um well i mean to her uh um argument she's you know she's got three rugrats to and why would she want to watch 300 episodes of a television show that her husband's on? I mean, maybe a couple that you're like, hey, I'd like you to watch this one. The yeah, and, yeah, the and, she's, the and she's seen those. Yeah. Right. Um, or even just moments, scenes. You yeah. know, hey, check out this 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 scene. Right. Um, but I thought that would have been interesting. So we actually shot a pilot. We actually I set up all the iPhones and iPads and we what? we made a set. We had uh, we had Misha call in and, and as a as a Zoom guest. And we we critiqued. Uh, it was his his first episode, Lazarus Rising. We 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 went and did an entire pilot, and then all of a sudden, like uh, TNT and C C W were like, we want it, and they were like, we want you to do like ten episodes, once what one a week, and we're gonna broadcast. We're gonna air it on broadcast television. Are you gonna do it? No, this was a year ago, and I was like, I was like, I, I can't I can't produce ten episodes of television while I'm on lockdown with three kids. Like they're like, that could have been really funny though with kids coming in and out and like just doing it and doing the best you can. But I was like, just to have this conversation, I've drugged all three of them and they're in a pile in the other room. <laughs> like this is that's not tenable. <laughs> is it? So so we we graciously passed, but uh, um, but that led to some other cool stuff. You know, I was looking on you know Wiki and all these other things, and you know I know that you started out doing soap operas and stuff. We talked about that. You know, I mean, you were modeling at a young age, like as a kid. Yeah, but it was like, you know, the JC Penney's catalog. Still, P pajamas. I was pajamas. But but you were still like you were in the I was in front of the camera. In front of the camera in yeah. that space. But I was like, I didn't know you won like a soap opera digest award. You were nominated for Emmys and things like that. Yeah. Like that's a big deal. Yeah. And as like a as a young I mean, I was I came out to LA at eighteen. I think I was on the soap at nineteen and I was going to award shows in New York uh, at uh, you know, before I was even before my twenty first birthday. So I didn't really understand the, you know, the weight of all that. I was just like, this is easy. <laughs> see, see, what's amazing is how you think it's easy. And I'm like looking like nothing terrifies me more than the thought of doing a soap opera because they do like four five, six episodes a day. Tell me if I'm wrong. And there's like sometimes you have 30 pages of dialogue. Is that correct? So it's uh, and, and I'm sure it's changed a little bit since I've been there. But I remember is it's about it's an episode a day. But these episodes are, you know, you're talking 60 pages, right? Because it's an hour long drama, a lot of dialogue. So they're shooting at least 60 pages a day. Jesus. A day. Um, Were you stressed? No, because you come in. I mean, I was, at, again, I was young and I didn't, I didn't even, ignorance was a bliss at that point. Right, right, right. You can I do was, anything. At yeah, that age. but it's, I, I will give uh, daytime actors all the credit in the world because, uh, you get you essentially get one take per scene 
And we're talking a two and a half, three to five page scene. Even if it's emotional, if they want one, one take. They one want take to move it. If you didn't horribly mess up the dialogue, if you didn't, if you, you know, if you hit your mark and you at least got through the dialogue in some, some form or fashion, they're moving on. They don't have right. time to wait for you. I once did 12 scenes in an hour. I, I just can't even imagine that. I mean, you say youth helps that sort of thing, and you're kind of like wet behind the ears, and you're just like, yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah. But like, I mean, that's a lot of lines. It's a lot of dialogue. And that's, I mean, you open any drawer or under any couch cushion on any daytime set, there, are, there are sides. Do you have a photographic memory? Can you learn I, something maybe, very quickly? Yeah. I, may, I, I, I actually envision the page in my mind, and I'm, and I, I see that it's almost like a teleprompter in my head. So you rarely even mess up. Um, you, I, I no, I mean, I, 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 I can hiccup, but for instance, just, uh, recently when I, I was up to, in Toronto shooting uh, the boys, boys, um, they, uh, they dropped some pocket dialogue on me, uh, on the day, like an hour before we were about to shoot this thing. Were you, did your nerves kind of get like a little frazzled? And it was like, it was a full interview, like an on camera interview with like, you know, lengthy responses that I was supposed to, to give. And I ran through it with the, with scripty. And, and then I was like, and then I had this idea. I was like, how about this? Instead of you asking the questions of the interviewer and me giving the response, you just read my lines to me instead of the questions that you're asking. And I'll just repeat what you're saying. So we did that for a couple of takes. And then I was like, never mind, I've got it. And then, then just we went, like that. And then we went back. That's and I, terrifying for me, for someone. And it's happened before where they're like, Hey, we got this scene that came up. It's three pages. They just send it in. We're going to shoot this after lunch. Mm -hmm. And it ruins my day. <laughs> it ruins my fucking day. I like to prepare <laughs> prep, know what I'm doing, feel loose on set. And then when someone throws that at me, but you don't get really nervous. You just kind of adjust. I mean, I, I'll, I'll get, I won't even get pissy. I, I, I'll just be like, <laughs> I'll just be like, come on. And then I'll know in my head, I'm like, I, I'm, they're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Like, I'm going to give it to them. Right. They're going to get it. But I'm just like, that's not cool, man. And, and, <laughs> and then I'm just like, well, I could sit here and, and bitch about it. And, or take the time to just accept or, it. Or just get it done and move on. And I, I usually pick the latter. Inside of You is brought to you by our good friends at Geico. If you don't know the name Geico, folks, I don't know what to tell you. But Geico, you're, you're talking about great rates. You're talking about a name that everybody knows. And, uh, you know, whether you rent your home, like Ryan, or you own your home. I'm lucky enough to own my home. But, you know, the biggest issue I think people have is, is paying their rent, paying their mortgage. That That's the big thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and on top of it, you got all these other bills. And so Geico's got this bundling policy. Ryan, you, you, have you heard the bundling policy? Have you heard of the bundling? I've heard of the bundling policy. Of course. You could uh, bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing because we're very busy and these things, every little thing helps. Geico, Geico is making your life easier. And all you have to do is go to geico.com, get a quote, see how much you can save. It's Geico easy. Visit Geico.com today. That's Geico.com. Even a Rosenbaum can do it. Inside of You is brought to you by BetterHelp. Boy, uh, I'll tell you, if it's one sponsor that I could really relate to, and uh, not that I don't relate to all the others, I do, but BetterHelp Online Therapy, uh, I'll tell you, it's changing lives. It's helping people all across the world. So many of my friends are doing it, using it. Ryan, you use BetterHelp. I do. How's your therapy going? It's going very well. Yeah, I feel like you got a good therapist now, and you're uh, you're happy. I yeah, I am. I do. Uh, yeah, it's great. And you use it uh, at least every month. Yeah, no, uh, once a week. Once uh, a week. Once a week, I have a video chat session, and you know the uh, yeah, and the the text chat is always open. So if there's any any issues, or uh, I love someone's it. got a lesson for you, then yeah, it's great. So you just text them. Mm -hmm. You know, people think you should wait until things are are unbearable to go to therapy. And that's that couldn't be further from the truth. Therapy is a tool to utilize before things get worse, and it can help you avoid those lows. Sometimes we just wait till everything's just hit the fan, and then we go, oh, I need therapy. If you feel like you're starting to lose a little control, if you feel like you're starting to 
feel that depression, anxiety. You just need someone else to talk to, someone objectively. Better help online therapy, folks. Many people think therapy is for so-called crazy people, <laughs> but therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It means you recognize that all humans have emotions and we need to learn to control them, not avoid them. And we've been taught that mental health shouldn't be a part of normal life. Uh, that's wrong. We take care of our bodies with the gym, the doctor, and nutrition. We should be focusing on our minds just as much, and I, I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, BetterHelp has customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. I like to see them. So does Ryan. Yeah, it's, nice. it's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. Inside of you listeners get 10% off by going to betterhelp.com slash inside. That's BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash inside. Do yourselves a favor. Get some help. Well, we're going to get into the boys. Yeah. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into a lot of stuff. But, you know, I mean, I look at your work and I know you did Dark Angel. And, you know, by the way, was Jessica Alba cool to work with? I no. Mean, she was horrible. Are you kidding? No. No, no, she was not fun to work with. I will tell you, she, I've told her, I've told this to her face. Really? <laughs> what, why so? What makes an actor or an actress, what makes them tough to work with? I, I, uh, I love Jess, um, which I know kind of contradicts what I just said. But this is no secret you're saying. Yeah, no, she, she, um, she was under an, an immense amount of pressure on that show. She was young. Uh, she was in a, um, she was in a relationship with, um the, one of the guys right w- yep a- and and that was that was rocky uh and, yeah. and and causing some some undue stress i believe on set and i was like the new the new fresh face on the set who wasn't really there in season one i came in for one episode but then they wrote me in as a series, series regular for season two and i was just kind of i was i was the new kid on the block and i i got I got picked on by the lead and she picked on. She, oh yeah. Explain. Oh, I mean like, like the worst kind of bickering a brother and sister could do. She just, she had, she had it out for me. She, she like, she, she didn't like you. She, I don't know if it was, no, it, it wasn't that she didn't like me. She just was like, Oh, Oh, here's the pretty boy that, that, that network brought in for some more window dressing. Cause that's what we need in front of the whole crew. Yeah. And you just kind of just well, and very quickly, I was like, "What the fuck? Like, what? <laughs> what did I do?" He's ass. Yeah. So very quickly, I was just like, "Well, fire with fire." So you fought back. So I just was like, "Oh, looks like we're getting bitch Alba today." Really? Everybody, hang on to your hang on to your nuts. And the crew be, loved it. Oh, loved it. And she kind of did she like it? And uh, well, it just then she was like, okay, well now I can now I can just be a dick to him, and he'll be a dick to me, and that's how we'll roll. That's amazing. And and it and it did it did build some mutual respect. And so you got along as as the time when you know she was under a lot of pressure. You know she was kind of bitchy at times. Yeah. And eventually you kind of accepted it, but she kind of got okay, touche. Touche Jensen yeah, Ackles. But we but we bickered. We bickered like brother and sister. But then like, you know, there were moments. Uh uh, you know, when uh when her guy was away, she didn't like to she was like scared of this house that they were renting. And so she asked me to come over and just keep her company. Ooh. And so I did. Provocative. And that's well, I guess it could have been, but I just knew I was like, no, this is very this is very platonic, very brother sister. Jesus, Jessica but then Alba like uh, brought me over her house to keep her company. I mean, I just don't no, know. No, trust me. Is. Looking back, I, I I shake my head at like, you know, like Jesus. Did I miss she, something there? Yeah, was, was I was I just tone deaf? She's what? like, hey, pretty boy, in a nightgown. <laughs> hey, pretty boy. No, she would have kicked me in the nuts if I tried anything. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> it, it, which she if she was, she's a very very tough little uh, um, woman, little vixen, vixen. Yeah. Uh, but again, like my grandfather died while I was shooting and, and she Ooh. literally just walked into my trailer and just held me for, you know, half an hour. All right. So, so, sh- so there, there was, it was that kind of a relationship. Right. And again, if, if you know, if she walked in, we'd, we'd be all hugs. Right. But, but it was, she didn't make it easy 
on me. Do you remember going set. back home after set after a long day and talking to one of your buddies and going, damn, man, she gives me such shit. Hell yeah. I was like, I feel like I'm getting bullied here. Were you nervous at all? Did it make you kind of like, like fuck, the lead doesn't like me. She's going to get me fired. No, because I forget who it was, but a friend of mine was like, um, was like, what did he say? It, it <laughs> gave me kind of some sort of a confidence booster of like, well, she's intimidated by you. Or she likes you. Or she likes you or something, yeah, something, which I mean, I just told myself that just to kind of give me the confidence that I needed to kind of get through the day. Right. But uh, unfortunately, it only went one more season and then that was that. But also speaking of like, you know, stars dating people while they're filming and that creates a lot of problems most of the time. You also were on Dawson's Creek for the final season. Yep. Now, a lot of these actors were dating each other. There's a lot of hookups and things. Where this is like, we're talking like 20 years ago. Yeah, but like, I, I you know, I just. <laughs> like inter- two decades ago. I, it is, but now you could talk about it openly. But like, yeah. I, I hear that, you know, there was some toxicity on the set. Did you ever feel that or was it very loose for you and you didn't notice anything going on? I didn't. It, by the time I got there in season six, it was everybody had kind of found their foothold. The, the 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 rocky uh aspects of of you know on set dating and stuff had kind of settled everybody knew their their place and right. so it was um it was a little more settled when i got that me and ollie hudson came in for the final season uh again i think just add some window dressing <laughs> <laughs> old window dressing and uh um i worked predominantly with michelle um, I played her. Was boy. she great? What a great actress she was. She and she was. She was another one that kind of is not. Um, uh, at least then she 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 wasn't overly welcoming. Uh, right. She was more of an introvert. Right. You had to earn her respect a little bit. Who was the one that was just very welcoming? I'm guessing Josh. Jo- yeah, Josh and I hung out quite a bit. Kerr Kerr Smith was great. Right. Uh, Josh and I hung out quite a bit. He and I, um, you know, we're, we'd run into each other all the time and. Uh, he's good dude. Great dude. Um, uh, James, I didn't work with too much, but also very nice. Katie was very sweet. Uh, they all busy. Phillips, uh, was, was, you know, loads of fun. Uh, but Michelle was reserved. She's right. very reserved. And I, I, and I, I kind of, I didn't take that as a challenge, but I was just like, okay, well, I just have to be patient and I'll hopefully I'll earn her respect. And one day she just, you know, cause we'd go back to the cast chairs and she'd just bury herself in a book and it wasn't, wasn't a whole lot of like. Sounds so kind of like Kristen Krug from Smallville. Very, she would bury herself in a book. She was similar. just very, yeah. Yeah. Just kind of in her, doing her own thing. She was very pleasant, but just like, you know, didn't want to chit chat a ton. But unless for, she'd talk to her. Right. But I'll never forget. But, but Kristen, I think was like, yeah, she was pleasant if, if engaged, R- engaged, but she wasn't going to. Hey, Jensen, how no. was your weekend? No. Heard you were at Jessica Alba's house. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What'd Michael Weatherly think of that? <laughs> Jesus. Um, so, uh, yeah, with Michelle, it was a little different. She, you know, if, if, if I was, tr- like, I was trying to maybe make some conversation and, you know, I get one answer, one word answers kind of a thing. Um, right. I'm like, okay, that's fine. We'll just give her space. You know, she's doing her thing. Doing and her she thing. was kind of, she never got mixed up in the drama that was on that set. Right. She so of, she never fooled around with anybody. I don't think so. Uh, um, I believe that uh, is that not true. I think Josh Jackson and her dated for a while. Oh, well, very possible. Could have happened. But again, by the time I got there, all of that was kind of had settled, right. you know, and everybody was sizzled kind of doing out, and they're kind of finishing up. But I remember one day she, I, I don't know if I, I'd, I'd finally kind of earned a little bit of respect from her. Um, but she goes, "What are you doing tomorrow?" And it was a day off that we both had. I was like, nothing. This is in Wilmington, North Carolina. And she says, uh, okay, meet me at this record shop at two o'clock. I was like, okay. <laughs> so I go down and it's just like, this is back in like CDs, right? And Michael Weatherly's there. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? I don't get it. <laughs> you again. <laughs> <laughs> and and she, and we walk in, I meet her there and she walks in, she knows the the clerk and it's like this cool vinyl CD shop. And she goes, grab a basket. I was like, okay. So I grab a little shopping basket and then I just follow her, n- not very little word spoken. And she just goes through and starts gra- pulling CDs and throwing them in my basket. And it was like. For her or for you to listen to? It was for me to listen to. And it was like, it was like Spoon and the Shins and like, you know. Train. Yeah. I don't know if Train <laughs> I don't, I don't was out there. I don't think Train was. I don't think Train was <laughs> in Sounded that mix. like it could have been. Yeah. Um, and, uh, 
and, and, and so she, you know, it was maybe maybe five or six CDs, and she was like, uh, she was like, okay, there you go. That was your day with Michelle. That's, she's like, that's 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 me. And I was you, like, okay. It was like her basic. It was her olive branch of like, if you wanted to get to know me, this is this is what I do. This, this is how I roll. This is what this is the avenue of of, of you know to 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 know me. It's right, like, but you this never. Is, this is the music. So I went home and I listened to all that music. And the next day I showed up and we had wonderful conversations for the rest of the, the rest right. Because now you could relate. You're listening to the same things. You have something right. to talk about. Otherwise, it's just like right. And small she was, talk. gosh, she was like. She was still a teenager, I think, at that time. Wow, really? She was young, yeah, because she started on that show like fifteen or something. Oh my god! Um, but uh, very sweet, and we we ended up having a really good time. And yeah, that was a good experience for me. I I I had no bad things to talk about. You know, people always ask like Tom and myself, like, did you ever think that Smallville would go ten years? Yeah, and we always say, no. How could you possibly know that? Other than I saw the pilot and I thought, wow, this is the best thing I've ever done, and this is really cool, and it's got. It, could have some legs yeah but i mean i'm sure you've been asked this question a long time but with supernatural when you saw the pilot was it something you go oh this is gonna last 14 years or did you think oh we got a shot to last a season or two uh probably the latter i i i remember going like man this is a really great script um this is and then seeing the pilot I, and then we got picked up i was like this is this is this is some best stuff i've ever been a part of we might get three seasons out of this. Wow. Yeah. What did you love most about it? What was it like if you remember, like, what just made you think, I like I like this, and what did you like about it? Um, I liked, I loved the character um, because he, the, the two characters, and this is no secret, uh, were, were written very much like a Luke Skywalker and a Han Solo. Right. And the figurine sitting next to you there. Uh, uh, it was, was, was Indiana Jones, Han Solo. Those were the characters, even though that you know <laughs> both played the same actor. Those <laughs> are the kind of characters that I just dreamed of playing. And Dean was very much that, and he was modeled after uh, Han Solo. And so the character was one, but then also this fantastical world, dark that's dark and not bound by reality. Right. And we could get away with doing whatever we wanted. Um, they let you improvise, or mostly it was you know you stuck to the script. We would always get script, but then if we needed to spice it up or get some nuance in there, then yeah, we would always. They, they, the writers, as the years, as the seasons went on, the writers became very trustworthy uh, with what Jared and I wanted to do. And there was, I'll never forget. And this is this is a a, a well known story um, amongst amongst the fandom of supernatural but right. uh we got this one scene and it was it was kind of where the brothers have a blow up and they they're like they part ways for a bit and they're they they, they break up right the brothers break up and reading it it just he and i were both bumping on it it's like what is this is not something's wrong it doesn't it's not working and i was like well it's reading like it's reading like a couple breaking up. It's reading like a, a rom-com couple breaking up. Right. You know, this should be Hanks and Meg Ryan. Like, <laughs> this is not, this is not Sam and Dean Winchester. Right. And Jared had this freaking brilliant idea. He goes, do me a favor. You read all of Sam's lines. I'm going to read all of Dean's lines. I was like, okay. And we did it. And it, that was it. Did he actually keep the lines or did you just say you heard him say them? He heard you say his lines and then you went back to no, saying we flipped. You flipped the script. You read his lines. He read yours. And I, that was the scene. I read his lines as Dean and he read Dean's lines as Sam. And and you kept that. And we went to the, our director who happened to be our producer. And we said, we got a pitch for you. And he's like, and Bob Seeger. He's like, oh, geez. Bob Seeger. Singer. Oh, I was like, Jesus. <laughs> Night moves. <laughs> Jesus. Bob Seeger. Very big Bob Seeger fan. Very big Bob Seeger. And we played a lot of Seeger on Supernatural because of it. Right. Um, <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> um, oh. So we went to him and we, we, you know, we're like, hey, Bob, we got, we got an idea about the scene we're about to shoot. And, you know, Bob is, uh, um, one of, one of my favorite people on the planet. Um, and he's just, he, he's like just old Brooklyn, you know, 
New Yorker like that. Ah, Jeez, what? What? Fucking what? What is this? What is this? He's like, what do you guys want? And so we're like, we got this. We want to read you the scene. We didn't tell him what we were doing. So we just read it where I read the other right. part. He, so we, we did all the dialogue. He's like, yeah, that sounds great. What's the problem? Well, we, we like, just read Bob, each other's lines. We just flipped the lines. And he's like, oh, well, do that then. <laughs> that was it? That was it. And that's how we did it. And it worked. It worked fantastic. Jared with a little uh, glimpse of brilliance. Oh, yeah. Him. No, he gets one or two a season. <laughs> one or two a season. <laughs> you know, there was a lot of, you know, divide amongst Supernatural fandom about how the show ended and what happened with your character. And, you know, there's a divide. Yeah. I'm sure you're aware of this. Yeah. What are your thoughts on it? Um, I don't think there's a wrong opinion about it. I honestly don't. I think that if the people that have problems with it are are validated and i think the people that enjoyed it are validated i i was in both camps i spent time in both camps um and this is no secret when i uh the very first time we had ever heard what was going to happen at the end of the season jared and i flew out to la and we went to the writer's room before the season started and they the they all sat, we all sat down and they essentially pitched us what they, how they wanted to, to wrap up the show, which was the first time in supernatural history that that had ever happened. Um, and what was your initial reaction? My initial reaction was, I don't like it. You said that right up. No, I didn't. I, I, I was, uh, trying to be respectful. I was trying to be respectful. So I, I said, okay, um, Hmm. Okay. I, I didn't give them a, an overwhelming right. like, response. Huh, huh? Yeah. I was like, okay. Um, I, I, I'm going to sleep on it. Right. Cause it's, that's a, you know, this is a big thing. Like I don't want to mess this, this up. 14 years. This is in the making. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I slept on it and it, about a week went by and I just, I, I went to my wife and I was like, I'm just really bumping on this. Like, I'm just, it's just not. And, and she, and she was like, is it, is it because, uh, Dean dies? And I'm like, maybe, maybe I'm just too close to that character and I just don't want to see him go. And I, I, for some reason, I always thought that if if someone was going to go, it would be Sam. Sam. As <laughs> honestly, as yeah. as kind of the, you know, as the um, the martyr. Martyr. I was thinking martyr. Yeah. And 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 Dean would then be left to just kind of stumble through the rest of his life, right. mourning his brother and his lost family, and 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 it would be, you know, maybe a sad existence, but. That's just how it how it happened. Or we would both go like a but Butch and Sundance kind of a thing, right? Um, but me going and him him continuing on just I, I just didn't it it just didn't sit well with me. And so so what'd you say? So uh, my wife and in all her infinite wisdom said um, you should talk to somebody outside of of this that understands the world, and that was Eric Kripke who created the world. Who created right. the characters right. who had been gone since season five. He left after season five. So he'd been gone for 10 years, but he still knew the show uh, clearly and kept tabs on it. So I called him and, and he had not heard the, you know, what, what they were planning. And so I, I told him and he did very, he did the same thing I did. He was like, let me, let me sleep on this and let me just kind of get some clarity on it. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll phone you tomorrow. I said, great. So he, he ended up sending me this very incredibly well-written email explaining why he thought this was a great ending. And it just put things in perspective for me. And then from then on, I was on board. Really? Yeah. So you needed an outside source. I just Daniel need somebody. Neil gave you that little insight to get somebody who's separate from it, who still knows it, but, right. is, but who's is not so disconnected close. a little. Yeah, but who's, who, who is looking at things right. from a macro uh, standpoint. Right. And, uh, and it, and it did, it just, it really kind of helped put things in perspective for me. And I'm sure I could have done that. I'm sure I could have called Bob or I'm sure I could have, could have called Andrew who was showrunner at that time and, and probably had a similar conversation, but I just wanted somebody from an outsider's perspective. I, I just wanted kind of a, a different viewpoint, right. um, to help me process that. So you couldn't come back. I mean, the, the Winchesters, I mean, you, you couldn't come back in a supernatural spinoff or you couldn't come back in a supernatural movie. Dude, it's supernatural. <laughs> it's supernatural. It's supernatural. Of course we could. Of course we can. And would you? There's all kinds of ways. You would. 
Um, if it was the right thing, if it was the right. 100%. Again, I love, I love that this character and I love the story of these two brothers and I love what it, what it stands for. Right. And I love the world that they live in and the, and the, the, the family that they have acquired through their years. Like I, I just, there's, there's so much love and attachment to, yeah. to that show. There's, it's a reason that it went 15 years and it could have gone longer. Did you cry your face off when it ended? Um, no, cause it wasn't, I wasn't sad. Um, I was, it was emotional pride of like looking back and like, look at what we did. That's, that was the feeling the the overwhelming feeling that I had was more of like, look at this amazing thing that we built, right. that we did together. This is, it was just, just emotional pride. So you didn't tear up in the last scene with Jared? This is um, our last scene together? The... You didn't switch lines, maybe give each other a kiss. <laughs> no, we we had we had well, I had he had his hand in my pants, but that oh, was other than okay. that. But that was below frame. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, the 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 final day we had kind of already processed, and it wasn't it wasn't really a big emotional day. Um, the emotional scene came uh, a few days earlier, which was when Dean dies and says goodbye to Sam, and basically like you got to let me go. That one was, that was heavy. Hard like, for I, Jared like, too. Oh yeah, I mean he, yeah, he and I were. Those were, those were. It was a, a strong mixture of, of character performance tears and actor emotional real tears. Wow. Yeah. You know, um, I know how close you and Jared are, and I love the guy, and I know you're going to direct a Walker episode. Coming up. Coming up. So I'll, we'll yep. talk about that. But, you know, I know that there was that you and Daniil created a, you know, a an idea to do a prequel for Supernatural. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was written about. And then Jared posted online that, he, you know, this is the first I've heard about it. And he was a little bit upset. Yeah. How did that go about? Um, it? it was. It, well, for most for, for those who know me know that I'm I'm extremely superstitious when it comes to a few things and one of those is and this is probably something that that a lot of actors share is like we don't talk about auditions until we got the role 100% you know yeah. I I learned that very quickly when I'd call mom and dad back home and they'd be like what are you working on? And be like, oh, well, I'm going out for this one audition, and, and I've got this other audition for this show, and and I'm. My I'm, mom still asked me if I got Saving Private Ryan. See, yeah, it's my, like no, yeah. My mom is it's like, it's over. Did you hear about Pearl Harbor? Are you? Did you get it? <laughs> it's like, it was, you know, 15 years ago, yeah. Ma. No, <laughs> no, it's not happening. Right, right. right. So I, I, it, this, you know, that's something <laughs> people who aren't in the industry may may not understand, but it is. It is just simply something that it's an unwritten rule that that you just you don't talk about shit until until it's a done deal until the ink is dried and this was my first venture into uh producing and and, and creating content uh and i i didn't i didn't want to jinx it at any cost so i shut didn't up divulge any information to anybody so i shut up about it only the people that had to know knew and I wasn't trying to keep it a secret for any other purpose other than than superstition. Right. Um, I just am like, if I don't talk about it, I got a better chance of this happening. You're right. And you should do that more often. And I, I definitely had people that I was, you know, excited to tell. Uh, Jared being number one on that list. Uh, mom being number two. Sorry, mom. <laughs> um, and uh, and then and then it 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 was getting close to getting to the point where it was like, Oh, this is really happening. The network, the studio had signed off on it. Now the network was, was getting involved. Uh, we still didn't have a script. In fact, we just got the script last week. Wow. So this was back in February or something. So it was very early on. I mean, we had a concept essentially. And, uh, you know, when you start getting studio and you start getting network involved, you start getting a lot of people, a lot of eyes and a lot of ears. There's assistants, there's, you know, publicists, there's executives and people talk and, and right. I got out and, you know, deadline has, they've got moles everywhere. Right. You know, he probably works for deadline. Ryan, Ryan, what? Do you work for no. deadline? Do you work for fucking deadline, dude? <laughs> He's over here taking extensive notes. I've noticed. <laughs> he looks different today. Yeah. 
It's yeah, it's my deadline look. It's your deadline beard. <laughs> this is this is what this is what a deadline. Yeah. This is this is what a deadline. This is the, this is the deadline template. <laughs> <laughs> this is what a mole looks like. <laughs> All right. So, so they, so they, they, they dropped, they, you know, I'm on set in Toronto and I get a phone call that they're like, Hey, deadline, uh, caught wind of it. And they're, they're throwing something out this afternoon. I was like, what? So I quickly had to like write up a little something, uh, and I'm getting called from, uh, network and I'm getting called from studio you know, head of PR at Warner Brothers, and I'm getting called from my agent, my manager, and, and like everybody, and I'm like running back and forth to set, and I'm on a new set, and they don't do cell phones on this set, right? Which is just something that the I like that I do too. I have no problem with it, but and they also stay on set, right? So there's they just sit they sit there all day long, the actors, and they they stay off the the social media and the phones and stuff. So if you need to make a phone call or you need to check something, you got to go back out to the trailers, which. Isn't, sometimes they're far. He was sometimes they're far, but it's also you know it's slightly frowned upon. Right. And I'm the new guy, and I don't want to like ruffle feathers. Like I'm I'm a guest in this these people's house, so right. I'm going to play by their rules. So I go back and I I look at my phone and I'm like trying to come up with a a, a you know a, a little blurb uh, that I can send out to you know like hey we're deadline boom excited. All the while, not even thinking like, oh, shit, I haven't told A, B, C, D, E, or, you know, like, right. I, I, I haven't like, and that, that was something that I was going to be excited to do. Right. Um, but again, I'm scrambling. Network's calling me like, hey, you got to, you know, throw something out there. So I did. And I'm like, boom, okay, there it goes. And I run back on the set. And now I'm working. Now that's out of, out of mind because I've got to be present in the you know, scene that I'm right. doing. So I'm not even thinking about it. And I get back out to my trailer at a certain point to check and make sure that, you know, that went okay. And it was like emails of like, congratulations, text message of congratulations. And then it all just kind of turned south. <laughs> I was like, and then and I had a long text from Jared and he was really bummed out. And I just, I just remember my heart just sank. I was just like, fuck. Cause he tweeted something, right? He, well, that that kind of he's like this is news to me. No one even told me this. Right, right. 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 Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, uh, in hindsight, like that that could have been a, a a step that was avoided, but he did it, and you know, it happened, and, and we dealt with it. And he and I were great. Like, I mean, that was right. right. I wish Your brothers. I wish he had just called me and said, "Yo, dude, what the fuck? Why didn't you tell me you're doing this?" And I would have been like, "Oh." Okay. Yes. I, I, you know, you, right. I, I've been on work, I've been working and this has been happening and, and it, it's, it's way early in the process. It's not even a done deal. We don't even have an outline. Uh, I just didn't want to talk about it or tell people and jinx it. Um, and, and he totally got it and he was, he's understood. And he, you know, he was like, ah, I probably shouldn't attack that, you know, right, right, tweet. Right. It's like, I was, I was surrounded by people and it was late night and, had a few drinks and I just, I kind of lashed out. And so, and I got it. I was like, yeah, look, man, I, I don't, I don't, your feelings are valid. Yeah. Your feelings are totally valid. And I, I, I messed up. I should have told you, I should have at least clued you in before the world found out. And that's on me. Well, how far does this, the prequel go back? I mean, are we talking about <clears throat> Dean and Sam as younger teenagers? No, no, no. It's, it's not, it's not, it has nothing to do with that. It's uh, mom and dad as teenagers really it's how it's you're the, a mother and father it's the story of john winchester and mary campbell how it all started correct so you're not gonna even be in it no you might do a guest star well how i it's, mean it's, it this, could is be, 19, could be, this is 1970 it could be a flash forward well flash forward maybe but this is this is early 70s when when dad got wow. back from nom and we're not even born so that's is that's it cool are you excited about it yeah, I mean, we just got our first draft of the script, uh, and you liked it last week, and it's I'm super stoked. Yeah, Inside of You is brought to you by Sonos. Uh, you know, I love this company. You know, I love this product. I had them all over my house before they were a sponsor. I've been begging Cumulus to, and the ladies at Cumulus, Agnes and Teresa, please get me Sonos. Get Sonos on as a sponsor, and finally, they do. I can't tell you how much I love Sonos. You know how a lot of times you have these clunky receivers and all, you know, speakers and all these things in your house and you could just minimize everything and make life simple with Sonos. 
a sono speaker that you could play a different song in each room. You could play party mode outside. You can go listen to some of the, of the Sundays downstairs. If you know who the Sundays are, I like the Sundays. Um, it's really a wonderful product. I haven't heard anyone badmouth Sonos. I say to my friends, I say, you know what Sonos is? They're like, oh my God, of course, Sonos. I know Sonos. Sonos? Yeah, Sonos, man. Oh my God, I know Sonos. Yeah, and Sonos, <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Sonos has a new product called Rome, and uh, this is such a sleek, cool product, and um, it looks amazing in my home, and I really urge you to check it out. Uh, it's in my office. And uh, the sound is unbelievable. That's just the thing. You don't need these big speakers, these big bulky things in your house anymore, these ceiling speakers. You got you got Sonos, and Rome is just really amazing and uh, durable, and um, I really like it. Sonos Rome is the ultra-portable smart speaker that allows you to bring the Sonos experience everywhere you go. Rome weighs less than a pound, and its premium, durable design makes it perfect for the home and for on the go. Thanks, Ryan. You know, when you're at home, Rome connects to your Wi-Fi network and the rest of your Sonos system, and then automatically pairs with your phone on Bluetooth when you're on the go for a seamless experience. Using automatic TruePlay tuning, Rome smartly adapts to your surroundings and whatever you're listening to and creates sound that's astonishingly detailed and perfectly balanced. Control Rome using the app Apple AirPlay 2 or your voice with an Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. With Sonos, you can start with one speaker, expand your system over time like I have. I think I have nine in my house. All Sonos speakers connect over Wi-Fi so you can group speakers in different rooms and play music throughout your home. You know, I love Sonos again because it's like if you got a girlfriend or whatever, you know, it's like she's like, I want to listen to whatever. And you're like, well, I want to listen to like this. And you can go, well, I'm going to go to my room. Well, your room is my room. Okay, you go to your, our room. I'm going to go downstairs and listen. <laughs> Just imagining you in a wig. Yeah, yeah, well, there you go. You, <laughs> I've been in wigs before. I've been in a lot of movies. Sonos, we love our Sonos. Please go to Sonos.com to learn more. You will not be sorry. Sonos.com. You directed an episode of Walker. How I'm, did that? I'm going to. You're going to direct it. Now, how did not. that? Did they just ask you? Yeah, Jared was like, uh, I know somebody I trust. <laughs> so he he went and, you know, he's he's big man on campus there. Uh he's got a he's got an EP credit and um and he's he's doing the work and he's confided in me a few times of like why my why did I double my workload? This is ridiculous. Jesus. Um but he much like much like me, he's uh he's just a a, a workhorse. And we just we just like to work. We're gluttons for punishment. And yeah. You do. You like to just work and work and work. Is this something that Daniil, Get this. your wife, sort of like? Go ahead. I I don't know. Is this? We're not live. But when is no, this airing? Uh, I don't know exactly. Whenever you wanted to, really, we could just decide that. Um, I'm literally leaving in a week and a week, a week and change to do a movie. To do an, a movie, to do a, a film for the next four weeks, Jeez. and that, and I was like, I gotta have a hard out, so I wrap uh, Walker on the twenty seventh, and I start prep on Walker on the twenty eighth of October. <laughs> so you're shooting to the twenty seventh of October, and then you, and then I immediately go to Austin to uh, to start. How directing. do you do that? How do you psychologically, physically, mentally, all these things? How do you? How are you able to just keep working and working yourself in the ground? You must have an amazing, amazing stamina. Um, yeah, I, I, it's just mentality. It's like I, I, I don't like to be idle. I, I, I have to be, I have to be kind of busy. Do you get anxious? Do you get anxiety? Mm, no, you really don't. Not really. Because you, really. you, you stay. How do you do that? What do you do to keep that those? dark thoughts out do you just work out a lot do you are you constantly meditating or what are you what are you doing no i just i just stay busy i just stay busy um and I, as long i feel like as long as i've got things happening then i'm doing something productive right then i'm cool it's when i stop being productive and it, and become idle that i get i just get antsy i don't get anxiety i just kind of get antsy like, like when, yeah like when you were in your hotel room before you were shooting I think Supernatural, the final go, you were right. just like had this stuck stuck there for 14 days and you were going a little crazy. Well, um, yeah, or even the boys. Like when I went up to Toronto, I had to do a 14-day a, a quarantine. Jesus. Um, but again, 
I set my mind to, okay, I've got 14 days now to work out, to study, to get prepared, to go into a completely different environment and try to kick ass. Right. So it forces you to focus. Yeah. That's amazing. Also, look, you're doing Batman, the long Halloween. Mm. It's already out, right? Yeah. yeah, You were the voice of Batman. You get to say, I am Batman. How was that? Was that just a really exciting thing to do? Dude, it's it's like childhood bucket list shit, man. You're you know? a you're a Batman now. I got paid to say I'm Batman. Did you immediately say when they asked you, "Yes, I'm in"? They, I had done a, uh, I'd done a previous film called uh, um, Under the Red Hood, and I played Jason Todd, who was uh, the Red Hood, uh, but it was another Batman um, from the Batman world. Right. And uh, Bruce Greenberg was playing Batman at that point and or was the voice. Um, so I was I was playing Jason Todd. It was he's like an ex Robin character. Right. Uh, and I got I got the call a couple of years later um, saying, hey, they, they're interested in, in bringing you back for another uh, another Batman feature. And I was like, oh, cool. Doing as, as Jason Todd as Red Hood. They're like. Now you're getting the upgrade, kid. <laughs> just like that. I was, yeah. It was Give me like, a little Batman. How do you sound? Well, there's. It's interesting because you've got the, you've got the Bruce Wayne, who's about like this, very clean, and that's Bruce Wayne, right? But then you've got Batman, <laughs> and Batman's way down here. Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Did you just love it saying that? Come on. Did you want to say it a hundred times? Can I do another take? I'm Batman. (laughs) No one can say, I can't say that. I can't say I've I've said I'm Batman. I wish I could. I know. Again, it's, it's, it's like childhood checkmark, like childhood dream checkmark. When you were renegotiating Supernatural, real quick question. Yeah. Did, did you call Tom Welling? He said you called him and you talked about like, he helped you out a little bit. That's bullshit. He's lying. I figured he was. Um, no, I, I, I did. I, I, I talked to Tom a few times about about that because he was he was really the only person I knew that had been in that position. Uh, and and a lot of the stuff that that I got from Tom, I was able to implement um, and, and kind of grandfather into the show. Uh, and it was all because I was, uh, it was all reflection of his experience with Smallville. Right. Uh, one of the things being, um, we got, uh, Jared and I got, got driven to and from set. Um, that saves you. I can't believe that wasn't done before. And they don't do that. Like everybody, no. everybody's self drive. Yeah. Um, and we had our own, our own driver and, and the argument to have that, cause we got some pushback on it. And I just used a Tom story. And I said, I'm tired. I said, listen, Tom, season one, he pulled over to the side of the road and slept in his car. This is your number one actor on the show. This is your quarterback. And you're allowing him, you're working him so much and making him so tired. He's giving all he can all day long. And he gets in a car and behind the wheel. And you trust that he's going to make it back to you the next day. Fine. It's on you. <laughs> you you got to I was like you got to take care of your quarterback. Yeah. Yep. Like that's that's yep. a that's a simple fix. And so I I I I'd said that <laughs> and Jared's next to me is like, "Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, with him. Yeah, I hell con- yeah. I concur." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it worked um, out. And that was it. I basically yeah, I was I, that was kind of the analogy and I said I said, you know, we're, we're you got two quarterbacks here. Um, I just ask that you, you protect us and, and keep us safe and, and get us to and from work in a, in a safe way. And that was it. The producer was like, okay. Uh, the boys. Yep. This is exciting. You grew a beard. You're playing soldier boy. Which I did not know I could grow a beard like that. Boy, that's, you grew a beard, man. Yeah. That, that sucker was, that pisses me off when I see a perfect beard. on you. I'm like, <laughs> motherfucker. I have this awful beard. I had more products for the, for the, for the, the beast on my face than I had for any other part of my body. They they conditioned your beard. I ha- well, I mean, yeah. I ha- you got to get the you got to get the shampoo that's special for beard. You got to get the conditioner that's special for beard. You got to get the beard balm. There's beard butter. There's uh, there there's the wax. There's the oil. 
I mean, I, and it was like, I, I didn't know this is my first time into this world. So I'm just buying different ones and trying different ones. Right. I had a whole side of my, my bathroom was taken over by beard shit. <laughs> <laughs> and you had the beard for the entire run. No, no, they, um, they, so what happens is, and I don't think this is any secret. I'm not giving anything away. Uh, they, they kind of find me. Um, and I've been essentially in captivity for a while. And so when they do, I'm bearded and I look like castaway. Uh, but then they, uh, um, then they clean me up and I get my superhero outfit back on and I, I go to town. Now, essentially the show is superheroes or celebrities controlled by a corporation and they're not good people. Ultimately, right. is that right? Right. And yes. so I'm, I'm guessing, or do you not want to give it away that you're playing a character that's not really that good of a guy? No, he's, he's a, he's a jackass. He's a jackass. Yeah. And it's like a Captain America kind of character. It is, yeah. It, so uh, it's every, dark because every... Ryan, you were saying how bloody it is. Oh my god! Because I'm going to watch it now that you're in it. Oh, bro! But I heard it's great anyway. You'll love it. Yeah, just, they just got uh, nominated for Emmy for best drama. Jesus. Yeah, up against. Uh, I didn't want to watch this. The Crown and Bridgerton and This Is Us. Because I hear that there's some dark shit on this. This had to be very exciting for you to kind of like. Uh... It is. It, it, it's great. I was a fan of the show before. Uh, we'd even talked about me coming on. Um, and in fact, the, the whole way that happened was I was calling Eric Kripke, who is the showrunner on the boys, right. Who also created supernatural. Right. And I, I was calling him to talk to him about the Winchesters. And at the end of our conversation, cause I had, cause he, he owns that IP. Right. Cause he created those characters. So I literally had to call him and get him to sign off. Now, now they kicked it over to business affairs at Warner Brothers and his lawyers, and they got together and they, you know, they did their thing. But, uh, but I needed to get Kripke to sign off on us using those characters for this this uh, this prequel. And in in that conversation, at the end of that conversation, I said, "Well, hey man, Supernatural's uh, we're we're wrapping up here, um, or it's or yeah, it's going to be wrapped up because uh, we were this was during the the break when we broke for COVID." And it was before we came back to shoot our our last two episodes. And uh, I was like, I'm going to be unemployed pretty soon. So whenever you're ready for me to come on over to the boys, just let me know. And he was like, hey, man, if you want to come over to the boys, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll write you apart. I, I, I just got, like that? I got, I got no problem with that. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I'd love to come over there. What? And play. I was like, I love that show. And he goes, well, hang on. He's like, ah, I don't know if he's like, I don't know if I want to bring in for just like a bit part. He's like, there's another role. I'll tell you what, I'm going to send you over some material. Take a look at it. Let's talk tomorrow. I was like, okay. So he sends me over Soldier Boy, and I read the I read this this material, and I'm just like, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. What who, made you say yes? Who what do made, I have to kill? Right. What was it about the Soldier Boy character that you like had to do it? He was. He's this. Uh, I mean, he's a, he's a grandpa, right? He's from the 40s. Like he fought in World War II. And he's he's just this curmudgeon, bigoted asshole. And, and he's you know he doesn't age, so he's this young or this this you know forty year old superhero uh, who's really eighty years old or ninety years old. And <laughs> and there's there's just so much material there, and you'll see what I mean when, when you see that when you see the the, the show. But um, you know he just he has uh, he has a taste for for people that were of his of his era. Right. Um, and so it was, uh, it, it was a no brainer, but again, this was something that the, the studio that Sony was talking to some much bigger names than me and, uh, and wanted to bring in for season three. And so Eric was like, look, I, I know you can do this. He's like, but we're going to have to convince the, the, you know, the powers. And how did you convince them? So did you read? He's like, you're going to have to put yourself on tape. And I was like, great. I'll do that. So I did. And I sent it to him only. And then he noted me. Of course. And I did it again. Sent it to him. He noted me again. Yeah. We did. We went back and forth about four times. And he was like, okay. I was like, I, I'm, I'm cool. If you're cool, I, I can take this up the, up the chain here and uh, see what kind of response we get. And I was like, look, if you're going to go to bat for me, I want to give you the biggest bat I can. Right. Um, so tell me if there's anything else I can do. And he's like, you're good. And so, 
he went to bat for me and then boom that was it but i i, I worked for it it wasn't just like a hey we want to bring you on for season three right no I, I had to earn this one you have to earn a lot i think people think that you know a lot of things are given to you no and you have to fight for them and this is how i had to do it this is interesting you know, uh you know the show right yeah so the audition scene that i had to do was a scene with soldier boy and butcher played by carl urban carl i saw you golfing with him on instagram good guy good guy. Uh, good good new zealand boy will he come on the podcast carl yeah if you can dig him up from uh down under is that where he is well he's in he's in new zealand oh yeah all right yeah if he ever if he ever surfaces this way yeah he probably would all right um you had a lot to talk about with him i'm I mean, sure that's that's he's got some underlying stuff like he's kind of dark i think yeah but i mean he's like part of the born uh movies he's yep. star trek yeah yeah like you know he's got he's got a lot of uh wasn't he dread too he's dread yeah Jeez, so good yeah, he's really talented he's really no, talented guy. carl's great but I'm go a, ahead i want to hear a, this i'm a big fan and and more importantly a, a, a friend now so that's cool um so the so the scene is between butcher and soldier boy well we're in we're in court we're in lockdown this is summer 2020 and all i've got is two three-year-olds a seven-year-old and my wife and i'm like no one can read butcher <laughs> so I pre-recorded Butcher doing a kind of doing my Butcher voice and then had Daniil off to the side pressing play and pause. So I was giving my lines as Soldier Boy and then hearing my pre-recorded Butcher lines back to me. Right. But this is the kind of shit you got to do when you're trying to get a job. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I've done shit like that too. Of course. Where you just, you know, you you kind of read a line a certain way and you give a few spaces in between so you can respond right. and you just kind of get that feel of it. But it, it, you, you really wanted this. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's it was, a whole season. You're in the whole season. Mm -hmm. And how many episodes in a season? There's eight. Do you think you'll come back? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's the, you gave I, me a smile. The door is not closed. We'll put it that way. Right. But, but you do know the creator. Uh, yeah. The showrunner is, showrunner. is definitely a good friend. And so it'll it'll depend on how it all cuts together if if you know but if, are you hearing good things that they he, he has he called you and said hey it looks great man You're yeah, gonna really love this. yeah have you I, seen anything uh i haven't seen anything cut together um but uh but i've gotten some some good feedback from from those that those that need to be impressed what's the one role you would you want or what's the one marvel movie or dc movie that you'd love to be a part of oh gosh um Well, there is a there is a DC property that I'm that currently uh, developing right now with with Warner Brothers and uh, uh, and some other good partners that uh, that I've got I've got my fingers crossed for. But again, Sweet. I'm not going to talk about it because you don't want to jinx it. No, you're not going to jinx it. I sent him a script that he really loves. Maybe I do that, love. Maybe who knows? Maybe it'll happen someday. I do love that script. It's, good it's script. a it's a fun script. Yeah. Uh, this is called shit talking with Jensen Ackles. Rapid fire. Ooh, I to wrap this. this up. Love it. Angela F. What's been your favorite part about working on the boys? Your favorite part? Um, just getting to play in a different world. Uh, you know, playing in the same world for fifteen years. Uh, I forgot what it was like out there. So getting around, getting around different creative people, um, finding finding nuance with storytelling that's just that's why we that's why we do it's why i do it i playing love playing a different character playing man. a different character in a different world and telling a different story it's just fun stuff man. you're excited i could tell yeah I'm, I'm excited for you dana asks what is the most ridiculous thing a fan has done to catch your attention you ever get a boob shot any solicited solicit, soliciting of sex well i was i i was a king of bacchus one year which is uh mardi gras uh king uh who rides in the parade so Oh, well, there, there wow. were there were uh, boobs, unmentionable things happening to get my attention. Right. But it wasn't because they were a fan of me. It was because they wanted me to throw those freaking beats. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, if you've never ridden in a Mardi Gras parade, I urge cannot stress the, the experience and the amazing experience, the amazingness of it. Uh, more. It's that fun. It is it is mine it's like life changing you hear that ryan yeah let's get on that all right let's, let's talk it. to my agent yeah uh but like did you ever get like because i mean i i imagine the fans i mean 14 years on a show 
uh, you know, m- my fans are fantastic, but do you ever get any intense fans or really emotional fans who just like are so in awe of you that just like m- m- makes you uncomfortable or have they ever made you cry or like, have you ever heard a story where you kind of sure. get emotional? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the beautiful things about, uh, being a part of a of a show or a film or something like this that has such a uh, intense fan base is you get to have a connection with a with a, a body of people that you probably normally would never have any any connection to, and so it, it you have this common interest. Um, that is that for some people, you know, there's that that old adage that. Uh, you know, when you're on set, it's like, hey, everybody calm down. We're not curing cancer here. Right, right, right. Right. And we're not. We're not curing cancer. We're making a TV show. Right. But I would argue that somebody with cancer is lying in a hospital bed right now watching a television show that's making them laugh. Or that means something to or them. Or that means something to them. Yeah. Or that they find some inspiration from. And I it helps them you. maybe fight a little bit more. And that's the kind of stuff that, that, gets me emotional i love it yeah emily asks what's your favorite storyline on supernatural favorite storyline um well i mean I, obviously the the just the long lead storyline of the of the two of the brothers and what they what they go through is is certainly what the entire show is built on so i've, I've clearly that that is uh the most important and the most favorite storyline of, of all but i would say of kind of the peripheral storylines, um, I would say one that that I truly loved that I wish we kind of gotten to play a little bit more with was uh, Dean and Purgatory, um, with uh, with Benny and uh, and Cass. I thought that was it was just shot differently. It felt different. It was a different kind of world we were in. We were fighting for survival. You wanted it, it to was continue. Like, it was like this post-apocalyptic feel to it. Yeah. We were just covered in blood and mud. And it was just, it had a different feel. And I, I just, I, I enjoyed that. I love it. Yeah. Kelly asks, have you ever had a real life supernatural experience or ghost encounter and did it freak you out? Mm. Um, I, I, ha- I have probably, but I have this, uh, I have 15 years of training. And it's given me a horribly false sense of security <laughs> around anything that could possibly be supernatural. Right. And so if there's like a bump in the night, in my mind, it's not like, oh my God, what was that? In my mind is like, you picked the wrong house, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that is a clip right there for the podcast right there. You picked the wrong house, motherfucker. Uh, Raj, what's the most afraid you've ever been? Um... I, I, I'm just going to say this because it's the first thing that popped in my head. I'm sure I could probably uh, dwell on this and, and think of some more examples. But Can I guess? Sure. Having your first kid? Uh, no. Okay. Um, no, because there's there's a there's a bliss to that. There's a there's it's. Um, I mean, yeah, I would say right now, if you ask me currently, what is my greatest fear? Right. It is something happening to my kids. Sure. And me not being there. Um, but I think the scaredest I've ever been was, uh, and just cause we had a huge anniversary was nine 11. Cause I was up in Vancouver doing dark angel and I thought we were under attack and I was like, I got, I got to get back home. I got to protect my family. Wow. Yeah. That was probably, and then watching all that, like 20 year anniversary stuff was, was pretty heavy. That was a terrifying time. Yeah. Terrifying time. I, I mean, I remember was, exactly where I was. Absolutely. I was shooting I, I, Smallville as well. I think everybody can. I think it's, yeah. one, it's one of those moments in history where it's like, where were you? Yeah. And if you, I mean, now we've got, you know, now, now we've got fans of Supernatural weren't even alive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. When that happened. But if you were alive and you were, you know, you knew what was up, you knew where you were. I mean, it was like when, you know, Kennedy got shot or when, the space shuttle, the space shuttle exploded. You right, know, it's right, like right. people, there's just some of those, it, that is one of those things in history where it's just like, and I was terrified. Yeah. Because I, not of like, not scared of the enemy, but scared that like, 
I'm not going to be like, I, I'm, I'm not there for my kids. I'm removed. And, and I'm not there for, no, I mean, I was a kid at that point. I was, you know, 20, oh, yeah, years you old. didn't have anything. Yeah. I wanted to get home and be oh, with my your family, parents, family, right. Your parents, my brother, right? my yeah, sister yeah, yeah. and my, my, you know, and I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to be like stuck in another country. Yeah. And we're under attack. And then my dad was like, stay there. And that scared me. Cause, yeah, cause like, we didn't know. Nobody knew what was going on. No, it was nobody like, had any idea. Is, is every major city now going to get hit? Yeah, like you didn't know that you just didn't know. Uh, dude, this has been awesome. It was yeah. always easy with you, right? Well, I, I, I hope not. <laughs> well, not that easy. No, it's not. But, that uh, easy. It's you know, easy. I mean, you got so much going on. You, you just finished the boys. Just finished the boys. You got um, the you're direct and Walker. Direct and Walker. Then you, were you doing a movie before that? I'm about to. I'm about to hop off and do a uh, a movie and and wait till that gets announced because it's not even. I literally just just closed. When will it get announced? Yesterday. I would assume in the next week or two. Okay, so it won't. But what's the movie? It's a western. Oh, my dream. I know. Me too. What's it called? Uh. I think they're playing on. I don't think they have a title yet. Right, but you're um, doing a western. Anybody in it that uh, I get excited about? It's basically um, the girl from Lost. Is no, uh, uh, Alec Baldwin <laughs> oh, is boy. an old gunslinger who was thought to be dead, and he's got a huge reward on his head, and he comes, he services, and causes all kinds of shit, and then has to get on on the run. And I'm the I'm the U.S. Marshal leading the posse to track him down. Another beard. If I had the time, but I don't think I've got the time. But maybe that that scruff. That yeah, they, they said just don't shave until we see you. So, How exciting is that? Yeah. I think I'm about to spend the next month on a, on a horse. With Alec Baldwin? Yeah. Jeez, man. Yeah. How much fun is his life? I mean, he's got a beautiful wife, beautiful kids. He's got a bar in, in uh, where? Austin. Austin. What's it called? Uh, Family Business Beer Company. Family Business Beer Company. I still want a t-shirt or a hat or something. Hell yeah. I'll bug you about it. You're wearing a sunspin shirt of mine. I just gave you that. Lift it. it up. Show it to the audience. Let me see this thing. Boom. Boom. Howdy. And what would you tell your fans out there, all 8.8 .8 million to watch this, <laughs> to watch and listen to this podcast, even when you're not on it, Jensen? Uh, look, it's, 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 it's fucking, it's Rosie. Who doesn't want to listen to Rosie? Come on, guys. He's, he's got, uh, you know, he, he's, he's got all the talent in the world. I love Jensen. This has been a real treat. I love you. I wish you continued success, man. Thanks, I, man. I love seeing you happy. You always seem happy. You always seem like you're just doing your thing. It's, it's a good life. It's a good life. It's a good life. You know, um, I've been very, very fortunate, and I've got uh, a lot to be thankful for. You want to say anything to Ryan? Um, no, because he's going to give it straight to deadline. Yep. That's, right. That's probably true. All right. Love Ryan, you, buddy. Thanks for being here, man. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> You know, we, we didn't we didn't talk about uh, because I had interviewed him before about the incident that happened on the set of the movie that he was doing that he talked about on the podcast. Uh -huh. You know, with the shooting, the accidental death, and yeah. uh, um, so I didn't get a chance to do that. And uh, I think that he, he had talked about it enough. He had tweeted about it enough. I think that he he didn't. I don't think. Yeah. You know, you you needed to hear more of that. Right. Um, I think he made it pretty clear on his Twitter. How yeah. he felt, and um, it was pretty emotional, and uh, you know, so um, I was thinking about calling him up and saying, "Hey, dude, you, can I just get an excerpt? From, you know, yeah, something about that." And but I didn't. I said, "What the what the fuck? You know, leave him alone." Yeah, that's probably okay. Yeah, I think so too. Jeez. Yeah, it was uh, it was tragic, but uh, yeah. Hey guys, uh, it's it's a new year. I hope you're treating yourself right. I hope you're doing good things for yourselves. Don't be hard on yourselves. We're all flawed. I'm flawed. You know, Ryan's flawed, no, not I, as flawed I, as me. No, I got it nailed. I got everything nailed <laughs> to a T. Uh, better help, man. You're still doing better help? Still doing it. I love it. <laughs> still, still You need some more better help after that uh, Hawaiian trip. Oh, yeah. It's been helpful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, make sure you follow us. Make sure you write a review. Please subscribe to the podcast. We got good stuff coming up. We got great guests coming up. Uh, remember, stage it. I'll be performing virtually um uh on stage at january 29th 2 p.m 6 p.m show you can go to sunspin.com sun s-u-n-s-p-i-n sunspin.com and get tickets there along with merch sunspin merch um and if you go to the inside of you online store you can get great merch i even have this new a script it's a, a popular smallville script lexmas so i printed out some copies and you can get my autograph on there and fun uh, funko pops and uh 
lunch boxes, Smallville lunch boxes, along with a lot of cool inside of you gear. If you like the podcast and you want a Tumblr signed by me or just you know a hat or whatever, so check that out. I'll be in La Mole if I pronounce that right, La Mole Con uh, in Mexico in March, um, and join Patreon. Uh, Patreon, it's Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com slash inside of you. Become part of a community that supports the podcast in so many ways. And uh, speaking of that, why don't we get into the top tiers who give the most uh, to the podcast and really, you know, help the podcast out in so many ways. And they're just so loyal. And some people have been with me for a couple of years now. I think I've, I've, like two years wow. since I started. Well, since I started Patreon. Right. So however long that is. Probably two years. Yeah, probably two years. But they... <sighs> They stick with me. Some people can't. Some people have financial problems or whatever. If they don't want to give, I, I'm like, fuck, dude, thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you for giving a dollar. Thank you for giving a, a quarter. Thank you for whatever you give to the podcast. It's just, you know, it's fuck, you know. It's, it's fine, not yeah. Joe Rogan here. <laughs> now, that's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. Man, he went a little, you know. Yeah, that's a whole other. So what what happened? I don't know. It's I, some, just, he some, was, I think some people just do it with too much confidence. <laughs> yeah i think that's what it is honestly. i don't know because he was always nice to me when i did stand up and he was uh i always i enjoyed a lot of his interviews i think he's a great interviewer but uh it just seems he's just too intense these days it's I weird I, I, it's just yeah. weird i don't know what to say I, i'm not gonna bad mouth him i'm just gonna say it's just different he's just a different rogan defrogan <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah. who cares that's fine you know, all my best to him He'll, good if he listened to this which he wouldn't he'd be like who the fuck are you you're nobody and i'd say we're no. doing great over here in our little podcast space yeah we're doing just fine we're doing just yeah fine. that's true don't compare yourself to other people <laughs> guys don't compare yourselves to other here are the top patrons uh nancy d leah s sarah v little lisa you kiko jill e brian a Ch- yep nico p jerry r w that's correct robert B. Jason. W. Kristen. K. Amelia. O. Allison. L. Raj. C. Emily. F. S. Yeah, CJP. Sorry, I said That's it. That's fine. Jennifer. N. Yes, Stacy. L. Yeah. Yeah, Jen. Oh, crap. S. Yes, correct. Jamal. F. Yeah. yeah. Janelle. B. Correct. Mike. E. Yeah, El Don. Supremo. 99. More. Rub. Mira. Dude, you haven't missed one yet. This is the best you've ever done. Santiago. Uh, C. No. Uh, M. Yes. Jeez. Chad. <laughs> we went with Santiago Chile. That's what I was trying to yeah. do. Yeah. What? Chad W. Dude, Leanne. P. Janine. R. Maya. P. Maddie. S. Belinda. N. Chris. H. Yes, and Dave. H. Correct. Spider Man. Chase. Sheila. G. Brad. D. Ray. H. Liliana. R. A. A. Correct. A. Michelle. Uh, K. Talia. M. Betsy. D. Correct. Laura. L. And Chad. L. Rachel. Well, Rachel. Rochelle. 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 Right. Nathan. <sighs> G. Missed his first one. D. It's E. Oh, well. Dude, that was stunning. There might have been a couple you of hints. You guys, in that's there. from memory. Do you see that? There He's a got couple, a memra. There are a couple of hints that you can't see. Nathan E., Marion, Meg K., Janelle P., Dan N., Big Stevie W., Angel M., Marianne N. C., Corey K., Super Sam Coleman, G., Dev Nixon, Michelle A., Jeremy C., Sebastian K., Gavinator, David C., John B., Brandy D., Yavor, Camille S., The C., Joey M, Willie F, Christina E, Adelaide N, Omar I, La- Lana, Lena, Lena, L E N A is Lena, isn't it? Ooh. Lena N, mm. Eugene and Leah. I love you guys. Jeez. Chris P, Nikki G, Corey, Patricia M, Maria N, Heather L, Jake B, Bobbit, and Ed Asner. No, Ed A. Oh. Ed A. What's uh, up, Ed A? Nice Ed. to meet you, Ed A. Nice to meet you. Ed A. Nice to meet you, Ed A. Nice to meet you, Ed A. Lovely man. Lovely man. Uh, guys, uh, I, I really adore you and thank you for listening to the podcast. This has been, uh, it's fun. It's another year and I can't tell you how freaking hard it is to get guests to do the show. It's like me constantly bothering people. But we've got some great ones this year. Uh, great ones through uh, through March, I think. Uh, 
getting pretty booked up. You and I are going to, we, we had a couple of weeks off, but we're going to get, we're going to do two next week, two the following week, and then one and one, but uh, get some in the can. Some good ones. Leslie Ann Brandt from Lucifer. Cool. Uh, Ludwig, Alexander Ludwig from uh, Vikings, Heels, uh, uh, Hunger Games. Uh, um, yes. Katie Lutz, I think, is going to come on. Oh, I know her. I hope she doesn't bail on me. Jeez. She, I don't want her to Christian bail on me. No. But, uh, you know, it's exciting. What, show up in a costume and overact? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> uh, but it's... Uh, <laughs> But we great stuff coming up too. I can't announce anything, but I'm going to announce something probably in the next uh, couple weeks or month that uh, is really exciting. And uh, I hope you continue to join me on on my journey. This is your journey too. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be inside of each and every one of you today. From myself, Michael Rosenbaum in the hills, and myself, Ryan Tejas. Christian Bale is a wonderful actor, by the way. He is. That's what I'm. He is. Christian yeah. Bale is a wonderful. Actor. Uh, give a little wave to the camera. We love you, and thanks again for tuning in. And uh, Anything else, Ryan? That's it. I think that's it. That's all. Go to therapy if you need it. Stop thinking <laughs> you're better than everyone. And dad, I'm not just talking to you. <laughs> right. Mom, dad, my brother, my other brother, my sister, my whole family. Hey, your brother Michael goes to therapy. You better than me, man. <laughs> Go to fucking therapy. And just slowly fade out. Fade. Just fade out. I love you. Thank you. Thank you.